Hello everyone and welcome back to another video tutorial from Property Now. My name is Jesse and today I'm going to be showing you how to submit a tenant check from within your account on Property Now. We're going to do this obviously when we're interested in taking a tenant on board for our rental property, but we want to do a background check on them. We want to make sure that they haven't been in any serious legal trouble or anything like that. So I'm going to take you through the process on how to do that. So firstly, we're going to navigate to Property Now, the front of page of our website. So just clicking Property Now here in our Google search results. The next thing we're going to do is click the My Account button at the top right hand corner of the screen. That's going to take us to the login page here. And I'm just going to sign in with my Google account. Uh, if you have an email and a password, you'll just input it there and then click login. Now we're going to be on the front page of your account here, which is what we call the dashboard. Now, uh, we're going to assume that you've already purchased the tenant checks, but if you haven't done that yet, don't worry. I'll show you how to do that uh, just a little bit later. So now that we have our tenant checks, we're just going to click the tenant checks uh, button on the left hand corner over here of the dashboard. Give that a click and this is the page you're going to see here. So we do not have any current tenant checks um, that are sort of uh, being processed at the, at the moment. So we're going to create one from scratch. So we're going to click the new check button here. Uh, we're going to, this, uh, this address that is going to display right here is basically telling us uh, which property that this tenant is applying for. So for us, it's 50 Rental Street, Brisbane, Queensland, 4000. Uh, and then we're going to have to choose the databases that we want to run these checks through. So we have the National Tenancy Database, the Ticket Database, or both. Uh, now, you'll have different number of credits for both of these uh, databases, depending on what package you've purchased. But for us, we're going to run uh, through both of them, for Ticket and the NTD, the National Tenancy Database. So firstly, we have to input the tenant's full name and all of this information that you're going to have to input here, you'll essentially find most likely on the tenant's application that they've uh, applied for and they've, they've sent you. If there's any information that you require for the tenant check that they haven't provided you, you'll just have to touch base with them and request that information. So the tenant's full name, obviously, is just going to be John Doe. We'll put that there. Next, we're going to have to provide his phone number. So something really generic here. Then the tenant's date of birth, which is the 12th of the 12th, 1990 for this example. The tenant's email address is just going to be John Doe at gmail.com and John Doe is a male. Now the tenant's current address is just going to be uh, 32 Tenant Check Avenue, which obviously is not a real address, so it's not going to come up in the list of addresses uh, from the drop down menu. So if that's okay, if the program can't find the address that you're looking for, you can just click find your address at the bottom here and then we can input it manually. So 32 uh, Tenant Check Avenue, I think it was, uh, in the suburb of Brisbane, postcode 4000 in the state of Queensland. No problem at all. Next, we'll have to provide the tenant's previous address. Now, this may be the same as their current address, or it could be different. It's just going to depend, obviously, on the tenant. For this example, we're just going to click same as the current address. And so all of that information that we've placed for the current address is just going to immediately load into the previous address here. Uh, address here. Next, we'll click save and continue. Now, from this section here, you're going to need to upload at least one of the next uh, pieces of information. So either a driver's license, a Medicare card, or a passport. Now, unfortunately, these are the only uh, identif identification documents that we can accept. So other forms of photo ID are not acceptable, unfortunately. So it will have to be one of these three. Um, the more of these that you can provide us, the better, the better the results are going to be. But if you can only provide one, that's completely fine. You know, if they only have a passport, if they only have a driver's license, that's totally fine. Um, but obviously, the more that you can provide, the, the more comprehensive that search is going to be. So I'm going to click here. Uh, we're going to 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 uh, input the driver's license information. So we just click the show button here. And then we'll hear from here. We'll have to put, input the tenant's um, driver's license number, the state that that license is issued as well as a photo of the license so i'm just going to input a bunch of random characters here because i don't have an actual driver's license number on hand and we'll say that this is in new south wales this uh, license was issued then we're going to click here and i'm just going to click one of these stock images and we're just going to pretend that it's a picture of the license which obviously the applicant has applied to you uh, and let's say we'll have a passport as well so Passport number, PA, and then a bunch of random numbers. Country of origin is Australia. Um, and we'll pick another one of our random stock images. 
Um, of course, this is totally fine if if your uh, applicant is applying from, you know, America or the, or the United Kingdom or any other country. That's totally fine as long as they have, obviously, they can provide you with a passport number and the, the country. But it doesn't have to be only in Australia. It can be any country worldwide. So we're going to click save and continue there. And this last part here is what's called the tenant authority. So this is basically consent for the tenant um, uh, saying that they allow you to do a, a search and a background check uh, on them. So to, uh, to get this authority, we do have a form inside of the forms and downloads section, which is actually just over here, if you can follow my mouse, um, which you can download and send to them and then they can fill it out and, and send it back to you. However, if they have applied online uh, via Ignite, which is basically just the online application process. If you have received their application in a PDF file and they've, they've applied online, um, this has already been filled out. So all you'll have to do is just attach the application. If you just attach the actual application file for the for the applicant, uh, that, that section, the, the authority has already been accepted by them. So I'm just gonna click upload here use another one of our standard images. This will generally be in a PDF format. Usually what you're going to be attaching here is just a the PDF file, which is um, the, the literal application that, that, that you've received from the applicant. Next, we're gonna click save and continue. Uh, we're gonna then be shown a picture of all of the information that we've provided. We're gonna check over that, make sure that's all correct. Yep, John Doe, that's his email address, that's fine. Um, all that information is correct. And then we're going to say submit tenant check request you'll see this green little button here saying tenant check request has been submitted and then all you have to do from then on is uh, just wait so tenant checks take around about an hour or so before they are fully processed and you are sent the results but this depends slightly on what time of day that you submit the the check so our business hours are from 9 a.m. to around about 6.30 p.m. Queensland time. Um, so if you submit your tenant check at, at 9 p.m., um, you're not going to receive the checks within the next hour. You're going to receive the results for that the next day. Um, usually around about 10 a.m. is when you'll be looking to get those back. So during business hours, it's about a one hour, one and a half hours until you receive those checks back. Um, when you receive those back, you'll receive them via email and you'll also be able to find them within your account as well. Okay, now that we've done that, I'm just going to share with you two more pieces of information. Firstly, how to go about purchasing the tenant checks, uh, if you're having some trouble doing that. And secondly, how to actually see the results of your tenant checks once those have been completed and processed. So we're back on the dashboard now, which is that first page that we see once we log into our account. So we're just going to want to click manage property and edit listing. It doesn't matter which property we click this for, just click that next to one of your active listings and then click the blue listing enhancements button, uh, sort of in the middle part of the screen. This takes us to this really extensive page uh, with all the different add-ons and enhancements that we can purchase for our listings. But for the purpose of this video, we're after tenant checks. So we're going to want to click the landlord protection tab, which is on the far right of these different little gray tabs uh, at the top here. So go ahead and click landlord protection. And from here, this is where you can add uh, the different packages to your account. So we have uh, two credits for the National Tenancy Database for $40, two credits for the Ticker Database for $60, or two credits for both um, databases for $80. Um, depending on how extensive you want to be and you know which one you're going for, you'll just want to decide on that and then click the Add to Cart button. Uh, if you need to find out more about the specific databases, you can just click the Read More button here and a little information will pop up uh, giving you a sort of the further details on how exactly the databases work. So go ahead and click add to cart once you've decided. Uh, you'll notice you can then remove it from the cart. This little button will turn red here. We're then going to navigate up to checkout over here and just process payment here. So we can go ahead and click debit card or credit card uh, and just click pay now once we've decided on what method we want to use to pay. Now, the final aspect of the tenant checks that we want to cover today is, of course, how to see the results of the tenant check once it's been fully processed and completed. So we're once again on our dashboard here, which is that initial page that we see once we log into our account on property now. We want to go ahead and click the tenant checks button on the left of the page, just like we did when we were submitting the check initially. Uh, from here, instead of this information being blank on this page like it was at the start of the video, we now have we have our completed check here. So we have uh, the address of the property that the tenant was applying for, 
the name, John Doe, and the status is now completed. So we can see the status here, and that's now been completed. So we wanna go ahead and click the view button to the far right of that, of that information. And here we can review all the information that we provided for that tenant. But right at the top of the page, we have this um, report attachment right here. So give that a left click. This is then going to save the file to your computer, um, wherever it saves by default when you download files. Give that a left click, and that's gonna open up, and you'll see something similar to this. This is uh, what a, a ticket check result might look like, something a little bit uh, similar to this. Well, that just about wraps us up in regards to tenant checks. Uh, you've now learned how to submit your tenant check, how to go about purchasing one of the different packages if you were having any trouble with that, and how to see the results of your tenant checks once those have been processed. As always, if you have any questions about anything you've heard in this video, or if, or if you're struggling with the process, or maybe there's, you have some question that wasn't answered effectively in the video, feel free to get in contact with us. Uh, the best way to do that is by emailing us at support at propertynow.com.au and we'll get in touch as soon as we possibly can to assist you. Have a great day and just let us know if you need anything at all.